creek Walk them up and down in the summer heat Same old boy changing like the seasons Country kid turn it to a town right heathen Hey everybody, welcome back to Old Man Van Running. Here again in the Old Man Van Cave, the Old Man Van Castle. Now today I'm going to go over my Chicago Marathon training plan. But before I do, if you like this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. If you haven't subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button and that notification bell so you'll get notified when more videos are posted. Comments, 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 any and all comments always help the channel. And hey, if you know folks, you know, friends, running pals, acquaintances, family members that you think might like the Old Man Van Running channel, please let them know. So let's get right into the plan. Okay, let's look at the training block. Now, typically I do 18 weeks for marathons. This time I've been running regularly. I've been racing regularly, as you've seen in my videos. So these first three weeks, I just kind of did. I didn't have a kind of formalized training plan. But I figure I'd pick it up from there just as if I was doing 18 weeks. So as you see here in the green, the first three weeks of a hypothetical 18 week block, we're all done. Normally, I'm running about 30 to 35 miles per week in that base, base block. But this time around, you see I've got 18 miles in week one. That's because I was tapering for the Father's Day Branford Road Race. And then the next two weeks, I had the equivalent of over 40 miles, which is a bit higher than what I normally do. Again, this is because I have that base fitness since the Boston Marathon. So there's no reason for me to kind of pull back on the mileage. It's just to start at a little bit higher volume and then take that higher volume all the way through this training block. Now, a big thing that I'm doing differently this time around is instead of running outside six days a week, I'm bringing that down to five days. And how I'm doing that is with that secret workout I found during my Boston Marathon training. As you know, the last two training blocks, I've had some niggles right in the middle of each block. I had IT band syndrome in the middle of the Boston Marathon training block, and what saved my training was aqua jogging or deep water running. So I've decided I'm gonna implement that as part of my training just to reduce the amount of pounding on my muscles and my joints. So as you can see here, in week number two, on that Wednesday, I did an easy four-mile equivalent aqua jogging session, so about 40 minutes in the pool. Basically what I do, if you've seen my other videos, I have a aqua jogging flotation belt that goes around my waist. I have a bungee cord that's tied to the swim blocks in the deep end of the pool up at the YMCA up here in my local area. And uh, I just go in there and I run in the deep end in place for the equivalent amount of time that I would run outside. So I did an easy aqua jogging session that Wednesday. I have a rest day every Friday, and that gives me two days where I'm not putting any, any pounding on my muscles and my joints. But that aqua jogging session ensures that I'm keeping my fitness and actually works as an additional kind of strength workout because of the water resistance. So in week three, you can see I actually did a speed workout on that Thursday in the pool, a quality workout. I did a fartlek session for a full hour in the pool. So that equated to maybe six and a half miles. So that was really good. Then I had a rest day on Friday. So two days in a row where I wasn't pounding on my muscles and my connective tissue, that was really, really good. And then I was able to do a really good eight mile pace run, marathon pace run on Saturday, and then a 14 mile run uh, yesterday on Sunday. Also, typically in my base block, I'm only running about 10 miles for my long run. As you can see, I'm already up to 14 miles. So again, I'm gonna increase the volume, the overall volume of my work, but I'm gonna reduce or minimize the pounding by adding the aqua jogging sessions. So now we're into week number four, and uh, you can see it's a cutback week. It's only 31 miles. I'm gonna do a 10 miler next uh, Sunday. I am gonna have a four mile equivalent easy aqua jogging session on Wednesday. And then it's just a, a basic four mile tempo run on Thursday, nothing crazy. That's why you don't see any details there. Then a rest day on Friday, five easy on Saturday. And like I said, that 10 miler on Sunday. 
for only 31 miles, but that's typically what I do in my base block. So again, my volume is a little bit higher. Now we go into the strength block. That's weeks five through seven, and then a cutback week in week eight. So here, I've got listed on this plan every Wednesday doing that aqua jogging session. However, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep some flexibility there. If I feel like I need to do that aqua jogging session for my speed work, say I'm a little bit burnt out a little bit, so I'm gonna reserve the right to take that Wednesday aqua jogging session and switch it to Thursday for my speed work. So if I'm gonna do, say, a tempo run outside on Thursday, I can do that in the pool. Same thing with an interval workout, I can do the same thing in the pool. So I'm gonna keep that flexibility there. The rest day is typically Friday. However, that's also flexible. So it's really critical that you keep some flexibility in your program. But I think this way is gonna make sure that, hey, if something starts to get sore, I start to get a little bit of a niggle, I've got that deep water running or aqua jogging there to take some of that pressure off. So I think this is gonna be key to keeping me injury free during the middle of this training block. And the other reason why I'm doing that is I want my equivalent training volume to be higher than it's been in those previous training blocks. I'm fitter from running the Boston Marathon and not really taking a long time off after that. I've been racing a lot, so I'm pretty darn fit right now. So I think that's really gonna take my marathon time down a bit. So I'm trying to get that additional volume because I think that's the key right now to me having a lower marathon time. So now we're in week eight, another cutback week, a little bit higher mileage than usual for my cutback weeks. But again, my volume's up a little bit. Part of that is that one aqua jogging session a week. Then we go into the long interval, short interval training block. That one, I got a lot of track work in there. Um, I also have a Tuesday kind of quality workout. You see there in week 10, I have fartlek or hills. Um, week 14, I have, again, unstructured fartlek or hills. And then I have those aqua jogging sessions again on Wednesdays typically, but I reserve the right to switch those interval sessions on Thursday to the pool if necessary. You can see my mileage on the weekend starts to go up a little bit higher than my previous training block. Instead of only at 15 miles in week nine, I'm already at 17. I take 17 through that first three weeks to adapt to it. P is for marathon pace. The three one is the first three quarters of the run, easy pace, the last quarter at marathon pace or better. So it's kind of like a fast finish long run. And uh, the key there is that I've got a marathon pace the day before, you know, nine to 10 miles. And then on tired legs, I do that long run with that fast finish. So it's that cumulative stress and adapting to that. We then go to week 12, another cutback week, 40 miles in that cutback week. So again, a little bit higher mileage. And then you go weeks 13 through 15. Again, it's part of that long interval, short interval. The interval sessions change, right? So, so longer ones are like Yasso 800s, one mile repeats, 1600 meter repeats, those sorts of things. The shorter ones are like 400s and below. So those are all to kind of mix up the type of interval sessions, right? Develop those different systems, different types of speed. That's a good kind of balance to kind of get that speed in there while I'm getting those real heavy mileage weeks in. And again, pointing out in this kind of seven week block here, the long interval, short interval block, my mileage or my volume is a little bit higher than it was in the previous blocks. Instead of being like 50 miles, I'm up to 54 miles in weeks nine through 11. And then instead of just 60 miles, I'm up to 61 miles and I finish out with a 62 mile week. So overall my volume in this training block is higher than previous ones. Although instead of six days a week outside pounding, only five days a week. Key there, is that I use that aqua jogging session judiciously to minimize injury or to prevent injury. And along with that, if I start feeling a niggle at all, I'm not gonna wait for it to develop into a longer term issue. I'm gonna immediately jump into the pool and do a workout or two. Flexibility is what's really important here. 
I'm going to be proactive. So anytime I feel a niggle coming on, I'm going to immediately replace that outdoor run with a pool run to make sure it doesn't develop into a longer term issue. Now, as you see, typically I have a three week taper. Um, again, there's a three week taper here. Um, it goes down to 50 miles in week number 16. Then it goes down to 33 miles in week number 17. Then you have week number 18 up to the Chicago Marathon. Now, I haven't added in the aqua jogging sessions here, but you can kind of take it, do the same thing. I will likely do at least one aqua jogging session uh, per week, maybe more in the taper, just to, again, reduce the opportunity in that taper to get a niggle or an injury that kind of hurts me when Chicago comes. So there you have Omen Van's Chicago Marathon training plan. Similar to my previous plans, adding the aqua jogging sessions at least once a week, getting a higher volume of work than I have in previous training blocks. Another thing I may do is add some races in here. So the New Haven Road Race coming up on Labor Day, I'll probably do that. I'll probably do either the 20K or the half marathon. That's a good warm up race. I did it last year before New York. Um, maybe some 5Ks thrown in there a little bit just to keep the speed going. I really like races to do that. Not too many of them, but in place of some of these other speed workouts, I may do that. Lastly, what you don't see here are strength workouts. I plan on continuing to do some lower body strength workouts. After a hard workout, I think if I do a hard workout in the morning, maybe on a Thursday or on that Sunday long run that afternoon or that evening, I'll do a lower body strength workout. The great thing about the aqua jogging sessions is A, they simulate the outdoor running, right? They give me the same, same workout, same level of fitness, same amount of time, you know, equivalent to the same amount of mileage, but they also give me kind of a full body workout because of the water resistance. So I can really use that to help strengthen my body and make sure that it's not just running specific. So having a little bit of strength work really is gonna be important as well to help prevent injury. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments below. I will definitely get back to you. I will be doing a periodic training vlog. I'm not sure yet if it's gonna be weekly or bi-weekly, but I will start to do some regular updates on how my training is going, so stay tuned for that. I will be doing another video here shortly on Garmin Connect so I can show you how to do the Pace Pro plan. Again, I use Pace Pro plan in all of my races and I do plan to use it again in Chicago. So I hope you like this video. Thanks again. And remember, lace up those shoes and let's get out on the roads. Railroad tracks run along the creek Walk them up and down in the summer heat Same old boy changing like the seasons Country kid turn it to a town right here